Well, today we're going to take a look at the Gerber arm bar and discover what this pocket multi-tool has to offer and put it up against the steep competition from Leatherman and Swiss Army. Well, hey folks, welcome back to another video here at the channel. I'm your host, Aaron. Thanks for joining me today. As soon as I saw this multi-tool hit the market, I knew I had to pick it up. It's got a decent price point, got some good features to it, but I wanted to see if it was actually going to be executed well, if it was something that I would carry on a keychain or my pocket in regular rotation, or if it's just presenting itself as like a competitor with a locking blade to particularly like Swiss Army knives, but it just doesn't really execute it well. We're gonna find that out today and see if this new Gerber arm bar is worth throwing in an everyday carry rotation or if it's better just to stick with other multi-tools that are currently on the market. We're gonna find out today as we take an in-depth look at this multi-tool. So let's go ahead and get to it. Okay, folks, I wanna run in a few basic specs for you just real quick on the tool. Now, when you close it up, it's 3.625 inches, so pretty compact. It's gonna have seven tools that we're gonna to look at today, uh, and it's gonna weigh 3.1 ounces. Now, the thickness of 0 0.71. Okay, I wanna hit this screwdriver arm real quick for us. Now, you're gonna get some nice reach there, which I really like a lot. Um, and I'll annotate that in right now for you. So you're gonna be able to get into places that say a Swiss Army knife or you know, a lot of other multi-tools with their short bits, uh, they're not gonna be able to do for you. So that right there out of the gate is a good thing. Uh, it's got a really good, strong attachment. It doesn't seem to have any issues with torque. I haven't had any issues at all with it uh, with torque. It does not lock, um, but because of the way they designed it, it doesn't feel like it's gonna collapse on you. Now it has, and I don't know if you guys can hear this, Uh, it's a magnet in there to hold that bit. It's a hex head bit. You can get it at any hardware store. Your screwdrivers, uh, excuse me, your drills and things like that would have it. You can swap that, and then you can put it in for the Phillips right there. Or you can just use it as a hex driver itself. Uh, so that's really nice. It's a little, like I said, loose. So I, I wish that the... the um, hex itself was a little bit tighter that would just keep it from rattling around but that magnet is really strong it's not i'm not concerned about it losing it's been really secure in there now for quite a while i've never had it accidentally come out or anything like that with a lot of use and again the um, long weekend of moving that it was used in and you know it's not lost or anything like that so uh, the bit driver i think is a big selling point to the design overall and much better than most other multi-tools in the size range that you're going to get Next up, we got our little awl, and this guy does have a sharpened edge on one side. It's not just like a piercing awl. So uh, I was really surprised, actually. It did great. I used it against the seatbelt, punctured right through there, and then was able to even kind of tear through and get myself a larger notch if I needed that for some reason. So the awl is going to function very well, and those of you that feel like you need that, um, it should have the 90 degree right there to also throw sparks if that was something that you wanted um, off of fire steel. So those of you maybe thinking this might be a good little survival kit tool or something, it will throw st sparks off a of ferrule rod. Okay, next up is the scissors. Now I've heard mixed things on the scissors. My experience was, has actually been good so far. Uh, you do have that little spring-loaded wire right there that get, does give you some spring action. The blade is pretty long. Uh, you are going to get a little bit of reach there. Uh, and I was actually really surprised because I had, ha had heard some people saying that it wasn't seating properly or the spring wasn't, you know, bouncing back the blade well enough. Um, but that's not been the case on mine. I have used it several times, including going through some paracord, and it did a really fine job with that and seatbelt. I was actually really impressed with the material I went through. I was not expecting a lot. I was expecting it to be kind of gummy and, you know, basically just be with like paper or something, you know, when you needed to go through, I don't know, take, a, take off a strings, you know, from your clothing and little things like that, cut a tag off of something. Um, but it actually has uh, some de decent leverage and a decent edge on it to be able to go through harder material. So, uh, but do note that I have heard several people saying that the spring-loaded feature doesn't always work so great for them. Um, and maybe you need to just adjust the wire uh, or they've had some issues. So I would say it's mixed reviews, my experience being fine, but I did read several people that have had mixed reviews on the performance of the scissors. 
Now this guy does have that nail tapper with a little bit of jimping and texturing there to grab the head of a little nail. I mean, this is like for mounting a picture. You know, you're just tapping a little nail in to get it seated so that you can then use a hammer uh, or just going through like some drywall and stuff. I mean, you're not gonna be pounding on this thing and you know, like building your shed or something with it. It's just a little tapper um, that you can do some minor tapping with. Then it does pop open and give you a bottle lifter or bottle cap opener um, that works and functions fine. You could use that also as a little pry tool, you know, to open a paint can or something like that. So that's kind of a cool little feature. I haven't seen that before. And then pops really securely back in this place. I, it, it really seats well, and it's got kind of like a little torsion um, part of the body um, that actually gives it that, that resistance so that it's not gonna actually just start falling open and closed. All right, let's hit one of the most important parts here, the blade. You can, I'm trying to do it all on screen here, but you can easily open it one-handed. Uh, you can't really flick it open. I don't, it's probably nylon bushings or even no bushings. I don't see bronze in there at all. Uh, it does have a locking mechanism like you would get on most other Gerber multi-tools or Leathermans. Uh, it's fine, no real issues there. It's just a little liner lock. A slight wobble side to side and just a little bit up and down, but then you depress it and close it up. Um, one-handed deployment is absolutely um, doable. You can absolutely do that with the design. Now this is a, about a two and a half inch overall blade length. And I do not know what the blade material is. It does not say on the Gerber website. I can't really find anywhere that it says it. Uh, it's a Chinese made, so I'm sure it's probably seven CR uh, MOV. It could even be lower than that. It could even be like three, I'm not sure, or five. I sure hope it's at least seven because then it would be somewhat compatible with, you know, like 440A, and uh, you know some other steels that are out there that are around you know what you would get on a Victoria Knox. If it's really low, like three CR, that'd be pretty lame. So it's, it seems to be holding a decent edge. It's got a hollow grind on it, a very snub nose um, tip. It can pierce okay. Uh, it's not the best piercer in the world, um, you know, in that regard. Uh, it's a pretty soft steel, so it's very easy to tune up. It has a very good edge on it. I was happy with the hollow ground edge on it. No issues there or concerns. Uh, and for, you know, a whole weekend, I gave, gave it to a buddy who's not really into knives that much, but he was moving. And I said, here, take this, use it the whole weekend, see what you think. And he was very happy with it. He said, man, I opened so many boxes with it. And then obviously all my testing with it and uh, the tools that he used and things like that really seemed to work well. So uh, when he gave it back to me, it didn't have any you know, messed up, marred up edges or anything like that. And uh, I could have kept working with it. I just threw it on ceramic rod real fast to get a fine edge back on it. So, you know, it's a budget friendly, uh, probably 7CR would be my guess blade that will absolutely do do most edc tasks you just have to tune it up pretty regularly okay so i wanted to show you there's really no attachments anywhere i don't know what these two holes are over here uh, they don't have any you know um, threads or anything like that but there is this little tiny gap i'm gonna hopefully show you guys right here that you can pass a small mini key ring through right there, and it doesn't seem to mar your blade, from what I can tell. Uh, you cannot get 550 paracord through there. I've tried, I even tried the smaller like bank line, didn't seem to really be able to feed it through there. And there is a gap, so I don't think it's gonna be an issue that I could lose this, but it, it's not a great attachment system any way you slice it. It should have come standard with a key ring just like what you would get you know with any sort of leatherman pocket tool or swiss army pocket tool uh this i have added separately this is a pocket clip that you can add on to any of these type I'll, I'll throw that in the links below for you guys if you do want to add one to either your arm bar or any other you know pocket multi-tool that doesn't come with a pocket clip um this does have that uh this is a cool little thing i think they're like five ten bucks for these little pocket clips so it's doable um but it's not and then you know you don't have to do that you could just put a little key ring on there and then run paracord through it or you know some other carabiner you wanted to attach it or whatever but i think it should have come with a designated like ring in a loop or something like that than me having to jerry rig kind of this setup so that'll lead us right into price and i did want to run in these two competitive options here. Uh, now, I paid $32 for the arm bar, uh, and that's usually about the going rate. You can get them in a couple of different color combinations. 30 to $32, I'm sure as time goes on, they'll probably be around 30 bucks. So is what you're going to be getting, again, a Chinese-made product, 
Uh, not sure on the steel as we've been talking about, but the, the fit and finish is decent. It seems to be performing well and definitely has some capabilities that these other two tools don't have. Now up here, I have a Swiss Army Tinker. That thing's about 22 bucks. So $10 less, made in Switzerland. Very similar tools, has an awl, has a 3D bit driver, two blades, a bottle lifter, can opener, all that stuff. Even has a can opener where this guy does not. Um, but the blade doesn't lock and it doesn't have that fully extended you know, um, bit driver that is longer than on the um, Tinker and definitely does have some capability that outperforms the Tinker and it has the scissors, you know, maybe that's something that's important to you, um, you know, that type of stuff. But it's, you know, $10 more and uh, you could argue the Swiss Army knife can do almost everything that the arm bar can do. And then I did want to throw in here uh, the Leatherman Squirt USA Made. They used to be about 30 bucks. Now they're running more around 40. You're going to get that, those pliers, you know, wire cutters. Blade doesn't lock. It's a lot smaller, you know, but you do get scissors. You get a file. You get two screwdrivers. They are much smaller. And that is, again, what really sets the arm bar apart. It's the locking blade and the bit driver that does have a very long arm compared to these other tools that we're seeing here. So that's really what you got to decide. Do you like locking mechanism over Swiss Army knives? And do you want a bit driver? Then the arm bar might be exactly what you're looking for. But if those things aren't necessarily a deal killer, particularly in the size range, then you're going to get either uh, more tools on the Leatherman and USA Made, or you're going to get similar tools for $10 less on the Swiss Army knife. Well, folks, there you have it. In conclusion, I think it's actually a decent performer. I actually like some of the capabilities that it has. It is slim. The scissors work surprisingly well for me. And that bit driver, though being a little loose, is getting the job done and absolutely can compete with any Swiss Army knife you know, of similar size that I have. And honestly, the only real drawback, at least throw a key ring on there, because I think it's slim enough. You could put it on a, a key ring and it wouldn't be that big a deal or a carabiner or something like that. And I think it has the potential to be awesome even as just a you know regular light duty EDC knife uh, and carry it in your pocket, you know, with a little pocket clip. So I don't know why they didn't go through with that. And in combination with the Prybrid series also that don't have any pocket clips, I wonder if somebody over at Gerber just isn't a big fan of pocket clips right now. I don't really know what the deal is, but I'm telling you pocket clips are necessary on a lot of tools. And I'd rather have the option and take it off. So um, with that guys, uh, I look forward to hearing your thoughts. What do you think about the arm bar? Is it something that's really um, connecting with you, something that makes a lot of sense for you, or are you going to pass on it and go with something else? So I uh, look forward to hearing your guys' thoughts and comments on this design. And, uh, yeah, appreciate you guys so much. Know you're not alone during this season um, of the coronavirus and, you know, a lot of worldwide shutdowns and lockdowns. My family is praying for you. Uh, we care for you. You are a valuable in every single way you're valuable um, and we just care so much for you you can check that other video popping up subscribe if you're not a current subscriber i'm trying to throw up as much content as i can right now uh, just to give you guys positive encouraging things but also just entertainment uh, during this particular season of life where there's not a lot that we can do so appreciate you guys you're awesome always remember stay equipped stay prepared and we'll see you out there